Hello, my name is Andrew Maffetone. I'm the founder and CEO of Blue Tusker. We are a full service digital marketing company for e-commerce sellers. We effectively work with mostly sellers that sell on and off marketplace and help them develop omni-channel strategies so that they can use their marketing to cohesively work across whatever sales channel they're on, which is exactly why I'm here today to talk to you about how you can effectively market your products to not only increase sales, but of course, increase profitability. So I'm going to talk to you about two different things here. We're going to talk about, obviously, we're going to stick to Amazon. We all sell on Amazon, right? Walmart, sure, maybe, eBay, eh, there's a few others, but we're going to stick to Amazon for today. So for your on Amazon marketing options, what do you really have, right? You got paid ads and you've got basically organic, so listing optimization. So yeah, there's a ton of paid ads, right? You have your sponsored brand ads that you can drive a lot of traffic to your storefront and start to really develop your brand. You have your sponsored product ads, which to me are kind of like being right place, right time when someone's actively searching for something and making sure that you're obviously showing up. Then you have your sponsored display, which can be audience targeting or it can be retargeting. There's a ton of different ways that you can use that. Then you have all the other options between uh, DSP and if you start looking into how you can use attribution, et cetera, et cetera we'll get into that another time. But most of it's from a paid ad side. However, the biggest benefit of Amazon is their pre-existing audience. The biggest problem with Amazon is how wildly expensive and ridiculously expensive it can be, mainly because A, you've got your uh, FBA fees, you've got all the other fees that they start making up as time goes on, and then of course, they're forcing you to run ads. Because we all know that if you don't advertise on Amazon, you basically might as well not be on Amazon. Then you have the other side of things, which is your listing optimization. So you have your making sure that you're getting your organic traffic. You want to make sure that that thing's all cleaned up and it looks really good. I'm not here to give you a lesson on listing optimizations, but effectively, if your listing optimization isn't good, then your ads aren't going to be good and your whole business that you're relying on on Amazon just tanks, right? So we're looking at how to increase sales as well as increase profitability. And the biggest way to increase profitability and increase sales is to build your brand. There's a lot of sellers out there that really like to go and find specific products that just happen to have a hole in the market and they can get a nice little bump until some competitors come in and then it becomes an issue. And yeah, that's a great way to go. But when you're one day looking to exit your business or even if you're really looking to start to scale it to these obscene numbers, it is possible to build a nice business that way. But if you're really looking to exit, you're gonna always get a significantly higher multiple if you've grown a brand. And usually that has to be done off Amazon. There are a handful of cases of brands that started on Amazon, that got real big on Amazon, people would go to Amazon to buy them, and then they built their brand off Amazon. However, few and far between, often very rare, and incredibly difficult to do now because of how many people sell on Amazon. So there are some ways to build your brand on Amazon. We all know you have your A-plus content, you have your storefronts, you have all the different brand analytics that you can use. But really the problem with Amazon is that your average consumer doesn't really know that you're the one selling the product. They actually think that Amazon is selling the product. They think Amazon's just got all of these things and then that's kind of it. And so your average consumer, and I mean like middle America, super average, like doesn't really understand, that's what they're thinking. Whereas we always know that it's several different sellers. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of grow your brand that way because they don't know who they're shopping with. If they have a problem, they're gonna go to Amazon. If they love it, they're gonna go to Amazon. So it sometimes it, that becomes a real issue. So that's why we start looking at off Amazon approaches. Now, I'm gonna go under the assumption that everyone who's listening to this is only on Amazon. So I'm actually not even gonna talk about building a website or building a landing page. I might touch on it a little bit, but I won't get that far into it. I'm gonna actually show you how all of your traditional digital marketing strategies that are off Amazon can still help your on Amazon presence if you start to venture into some of these. Now, I'm gonna go through each of these. I'm gonna explain how each of these different things can actually benefit the Amazon business and how you can drive traffic to your Amazon business from there. However, I never suggest doing all of them in one shot. You're gonna to wanna to pick one. And I'll kinda of go through how you decipher that, right? So, the first thing we're gonna talk about, and, and by the way, the biggest reason that you wanna approach this is because of the clear limitations that you have on Amazon versus off Amazon. Sure, we can talk about 
lightning deals and coupons and all that fun stuff, but those are all short-lived. They're quick little spurts and they're gonna discount your product. So that's already giving you a problem with profitability. Might increase your overall revenue, but the actual money you're walking away with kind of null and void. So all these different aspects are opening up a completely different audience. Amazon's gonna love it because you're driving traffic to Amazon, which means it's going to improve the organic side as long as your listing looks good. So let's kind of go through these, right? So you're off Amazon approaches. So you have your search ads. So typically, I say search ads, everyone knows it's Google ads. Although Microsoft and Bing, in my, my opinion, since they got ChatGPT now, they might pick up. So it's worth trying, but another video for another day. Um, so the search ads, you have two options here. You have your Amazon attribution, where you can actually leverage that and still get a percentage of the products that you sell, as long as your product line is within a certain threshold. So basically what I mean by that is if you use Amazon attribution, you can only select up to a thousand products that you'll in your brand that you'll get credit for. So if you're a volume business and you've got a lot of products, it can be a little more difficult that way. Or you have your other option, which is sending them directly to your storefront and you use the uh, custom source code in the back end, right? So the benefit of the Amazon attribution is that you will clearly see who purchased, uh, well, not who purchased, but you see how many people purchased, maybe how many, yeah, how many clicks you got, all that fun stuff, and you'll get that credit for the sales. So you'll actually get a little bit of a per, uh, percentage as if you were like your own affiliate. The custom source code in the back end of the storefront does the same thing with the exclusion of being able to track um, or I'm sorry, being able to get a commission for that. So pros and cons to both of them. I really like the attribution side. The problem with the attribution side that I really don't like is you can only send them directly to listings. You really can't send them directly to your storefront and make the shopping experiences easy. So it kind of depends on your audience, but either way, pros and cons to this. The biggest benefit of search ads is yes, while people are actively searching for things on Amazon, your sponsored products are gonna do very well search ads are the same concept. People are actively searching for things on Google and Bing and you wanna be right there at the right place at the right time. So those will convert more. The bad part of it is while you can track the sales that are coming in through Amazon, you Google you can't tell Google. Like Google won't be able to communicate with Amazon on who converted and who didn't. So the only thing you can do is maximize clicks. So when you're doing an approach like that, when you're trying to just get as much traffic as possible, I always suggest don't overdo your budget, especially in the beginning until you prove out that you are getting the sales. Unfortunately, you'll have to figure out from the source code or from the attribution, how many sales you got, then do your own math on what your spend was. But the added benefit of if people are looking to, uh, if you're, I'm sorry, if you're maximizing clicks, usually your cost per click is lower. So you can actually get cost per clicks on Google and Bing very often, much less expensive than you can get it on uh, on sponsored products, sponsored brands, etc. Social ads gonna be a similar project uh, process, right? The difference between these two, and I always say like you want to pick one first and then go in that certain direction. Search ads to me, you can't do shopping ads unless you have a catalog, so you can only do shopping uh, search ads. If you have your own website and then you add like an available on Amazon button on there, then you can do your shopping ads and send people to Amazon. But that's a or buy with Prime. Um, but that's a different video for another day. So search ads to me are people know that they have a problem and they know what the solution is, so they're actively searching for it. Most of the time, that is the way the intent is on the on those page on those websites. Social ads are either A, they know they have a problem, but they're not looking for it right now, or B, they don't even know they have a problem and you have a solution to that problem they didn't even know they had. So there's much more education that can be done on the social side. And we all know this from video and imagery and all the fun stuff that you can do on social media comparative to search ads. So in my opinion, you really need to know what your product is and then how you need to communicate it to your customer base. Do you think that sending them directly to a storefront or a product listing without any explanation and just a handful of like, probably I think it's like 180 characters total that you can use is gonna be sufficient? Perfect, search ads are great. If you think that it's gonna require some education and it's going to need to be explained a little bit more before they get there, social ads are probably the better bet. The biggest benefit of course to the social ad side is that it's significantly less expensive than search ads, which also means it can be less expensive than your sponsored product, sponsored brand, et cetera on Amazon. So there's two different ways you can do it. Same concept of using the attribution on uh, search and uh, Amazon attribution or the custom source tag. 
And then of course, social, it's gonna be the same concept. Uh, Amazon won't talk to Facebook or whichever uh, social platform that you're running it on, so you can only do targeting traffic. Now we're gonna look at SEO. This one's always really interesting uh, because it's a bit of a long game, but I've seen it work fantastically. You don't necessarily, A, you don't need a website, period, if you don't wanna have one. B, though, I don't know if I said A or B, or, yeah, whatever, the next step here, I usually prefer to have my own website for this. Ideally, at a bare minimum, you want to have a blog. So from an SEO side, you think if you do your listing optimization perfect and you run your paid ads really well, the goal is obviously to get your listing to the first page and ideally in the first position, right? Well, you're doing that on Amazon, but you're completely ignoring Google and you can get the URL for your ASIN to rank at a certain point, right? So if your title is optimized for Amazon and you've got your product description, your bullet points and all that are optimized, it can very well be optimized for Google as well. The only thing that's missing is the page authority. So Amazon's obviously got this massive domain authority. And for those of you who don't know, your domain authority is basically how your website ranks across all other websites your page authority is the individual pages and how they rank. So if you have a newer listing, or even if you have a listing that's been around for a while, but not a lot of people off Amazon are linking to it, it may not rank high enough off Amazon or on and any of the search engines. So if you actually focus on getting backlinks to that uh, product ASIN itself, or you focus on creating your own content that is relevant to your product line, you wanna link to those products, and then you want to also link to literally anything else that's relevant to whatever you're talking about, except competitors, of course, because you have to have inbound and outbound links. That's another video for another time on SEO best practices. But that can actually help your Amazon listing get higher up the rankings on Google, in which case now you're getting all this extra organic traffic. And let's keep in mind, every single one of these things is beneficial to Amazon because every time you drive more traffic to Amazon, you're getting more traffic on the listing, you're getting more engagement, hopefully you're getting more sales, your conversion rate hopefully is decent, you're getting more reviews, which obviously Amazon loves, so your organic ranking starts to go up as well. So what I'm trying to also help here is not only are these other marketing tactics off Amazon going to help me bring more traffic to my listing, but in the long run, it should help my organic side, obviously increasing my profitability and not being so reliant on paid ads. The email side is very straightforward. Like I had said earlier, if you're looking to exit one day and you want to have a real nice multiple, yes, obviously anyone that acquires you is going to want to make sure that you're profitable and the standard aspects of your business are there. However, they might be in a situation where they also want to buy you for whatever else you have, which usually is your data and your audience. So if you think of you sell a bunch of fishing stuff, right? You're a big fishing seller. You have all these different lures and rods and all these different things. And a hunting company comes along and all they have is hunting stuff and they've wanted to get into fishing. There's a good chance that the hunting audience is very similar, if not the same to the fishing audience. So immediately they now realize not only can they acquire you for your product line and your profitability and the obvious aspects of your business, but they can also acquire your list that they can sell their hunting stuff to. So your value has now gone up because you have a very large asset. So developing an email and starting to do some kind of email list, you could do an, a newsletter around fishing stuff or obviously whatever your product line is about, but anything like that can really help you drive traffic to your Amazon listing, especially if you have consumables or if you have consistently new products or new variations of things coming out, you can alert your audience that these things have changed, give them a custom coupon of their own on Amazon, send them to the listing, and that can really boost your product launches as well. So when you're first doing a product launch, you can send out a big old email and say, hey, thanks for being a subscriber. Here's a coupon to this new thing we announced, and all of a sudden, your immediate snowball effect of a new product is killing it. Then you have social media, very similar to the social ad side, takes a little bit longer, but if you can get a real nice social following, just like this email list, builds a massive audience for you that you can eventually get acquired for at a higher multiple down the road. Social media is a long game. It can take a lot of work, but when it's done correctly, it can help you go viral occasionally and don't, don't like, I'm not guaranteeing anyone's going viral because that doesn't work that way, but Social media can absolutely help you get your product out in front of a much larger audience that may not even be aware that you exist. Then you have your influencer slash like affiliate marketing side. So obviously with the Amazon affiliates program, fantastic. They also have the, uh, 
Oh, and I'm drawing a blank on what it's called. It's Amazon Connectors something. I forgot what it's called. I apologize. Uh, but it's where you can go and create campaigns and people can submit to basically go and promote your product and get a small co commission for selling it or something like that. But influencer marketing, super easy to do. All you have to do is find what your audience is interested in, find out who they follow, reach out to those people, talk to them about either A, sending them a free product and asking them to just post and say what they're interested, what they like about it, which is called seeding, or B, you just send it to them, obviously you negotiate with them, paying them, et cetera, and then you can still offer them the affiliate side so they can get a commission out of it. So these are all just the basics. I mean, we could get into uh, partnership stuff, we could get into chat bots, like there's a million other things, but these are just the basics to cover that can really help you bring your Amazon business much higher than it is now and not being so reliant on paying Again, it's not Jeff anymore, but paying Amazon so much money just because that's all you can figure out within the Amazon ecosystem. So by not being so reliant on paid ads, you still need to focus on your listing. To me, not having a good listing or not having a good storefront is the same concept as not having a good website. I don't know why you would spend all this money or do all this work to drive traffic to something that just doesn't convert very well. This is your home, this is your brand focus here first and then work up the funnel from there. So all of these things all come down to your listing optimization at the end of the day. But either way, not being so reliant on paid ads on Amazon is the best way that you can really focus on an off Amazon strategy, scale your revenue, and of course, scale your profitability. So if you have any questions at all, I do this all day long with sellers all the time. I can also give you insight into how you can incorporate this concept into your website that also links to an available on Amazon button on your site that not only improves the conversion rate of your website, but also will help your Amazon business for obvious reasons. Um, feel free to email me, andrew at bluetusker.com, uh, but appreciate you all having me, and I hope that this was worth your time. Have a good one.